Our topic today is going to be about ancestry and family tree resources uh, by myself. I'm Tom Kreitzer. Uh, we'll talk about what Ancestry.com offers. Uh, then I'll uh, go into a little more detail about uh, my Heritage Family Tree Service. They make some software and a website. And we'll talk about a bunch of other free resources in that. Little biography on myself. I'm known as the PC guy. I have the uh, personalized license plate, the PC guy. I'm the son of John Kreitzer. John's in back there here at Crondelot. I worked at uh, 3M in their information technology uh, area for 40 years. Uh, I've been an author. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I, as far as working there, I, the, the only thing I needed to hang up is I got my pension, and they still had pension, so uh, uh, keep going. Keep buying scotch tape and post-its, because uh, that's supporting me there. <laughs> I've been an officer and a presenter at the 3M Personal Computing Club for 35 years. Uh, I do offer free computer help. Uh, I've listed uh, some information on, on the handout. Uh, uh, but if you have any questions or comments, uh, certainly you can get them to me. I like to say I'm thrifty. I'm not cheap. Uh, if there's a free way to do things or, or an inexpensive way compared to an expensive way, I'll look for the, for the cheaper way. And uh, nowadays, there's so many things that you can do for little or no cost that uh, really has to be something special to pay, pay a lot of money for. Uh, okay, uh, we have coming up in March, uh, so I give these presentations about once a month there, and the next one will be in March, and this will be on legal software and sites. So uh, in that presentation, we'll talk about wills, living trusts, power of attorney, healthcare directives, uh, things like that, and I'll also talk about a, a nice website that is free uh, called Cake, and it... Uh, uh, does helps you with end of life planning and setting up uh, transitions uh, for even your passwords to some of the uh, things that you have where you can store all this stuff. So it's a handy resource. Also, along with my sister and my brother in law, Gary, who's in back there, uh, we uh, put on a fix it clinic here at 3M. And our next one, about every two months, two to three months, we do the fix it clinic. Uh, we have one coming up in March 14th. You can sign up at the information table for a slot. Uh, we do it up in the art room. If you've got a broken small appliance, lamps, electronics, mobile devices, jewelry, uh, small furniture, fans, uh, uh, we'll try and help you as best we can. Most of the stuff we, we end up fixing, but some stuff we can't. But we'll uh, try and fix it there uh, while, when you bring it down. Uh, this is uh, relatively new. Uh, a couple of months ago, I added some information to the Crondelot website. Uh, so if you go out to the Crondelot website, uh, there's a uh, new entry out there called Tech Help. And this Tech Help, uh, we have the calendar. So the calendar of these events and some of the one-on-one -on -one help that's available and the Fix-It Clinic, I put those calendar entries out there. Also have uh, out there resources, and these resources are the past meetings. So I mentioned that I'm recording the meeting. Uh, don't worry, none of you, I'm not using a camera there. It's only capturing the screen up here in my voice. Uh, but I record the meetings, and I put those out there. So if you miss a meeting or want to revisit one, you can go out there. And also the handouts are out there. We have an FAQ for some questions, not a whole lot of stuff out there yet. And then if you want to ask a question, you can ask a question, type in a question, and I'll uh, respond to it out there also. Okay, let's get to our main topic today, which is ancestry and family tree resources. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, how many, is anyone currently doing uh, ancestry in that? Okay, so Ken is there. Okay. Uh, everybody's at different points and spends a different amount of time, so it's nice to share with other people uh, uh, what you're doing and, and that, so that's good. 
Uh, hopefully, uh, you'll learn some resources here that you can use uh, to document, share, and publish your family's history. So I mentioned family history. Genealogy is part of that, and that's a small part of the family history uh, because genealogy is really uh, concerned with tracing lineages in the family tree, both up, up the family tree, your ancestors, and the descendants uh, down. But uh, family history usually is stories about people and connecting uh, things that way. So family history is a fuller story or a biography of a single family over several generations. It, you really do need the genealogy to be able to tell you, you know, where people uh, were and who their parents were and maybe they moved and maybe they had uh, these occupations. So it all kind of fits together there. The study draws on oral history of the recent period and archival records for the periods beyond living memory. So when you start documenting this family history, uh, thankfully some of the people are still around and you can talk to them and get some history. But once you start going back, uh, you're going to find that, oh, this person is no longer with us and oh, they've moved away and maybe you can't do something. So uh, it's, it's using some of these resources to try and fill in some of the gaps uh, and things in your, in your whole family tree and that. We're going to be jumping around a little bit today, which is the same that goes on with most of the re uh, research that you do. You start down one path, you find some information, you jump over here. So uh, we'll be doing that. Ask a question at any time and I'll try and answer it there. So just raise your hand. And... Okay, let's start with the most popular uh, website out there and way to do your family uh, tree and ancestry is using Ancestry.com. It's the number one website. You've probably all seen the ads on TV and in the newspapers and magazines. Uh, uh, they've been around uh, the longest there. They have the largest number of people uh, subscribing to it. Uh, the one drawback, uh, it's expensive. It varies from anywhere from about $200 a year to $500 a year. And that's depending on whether you have access to just U.S. records, world records, or all access account. They do have a free 14-day trial, uh, but you must provide a credit card to uh, do it. And we'll talk about some ways of uh, getting at some stuff there, too. They have a comprehensive set of records and, and database of information with more than 100 million family trees from all around the world. So uh, they, they are uh, one of the biggest there. They have easy to navigate website with more search ancestry options than most of the competitors that I'll talk about. Fortunately, uh, anyone can do a search, a free public, uh, a free public member trees. So when people publish a family tree or publish family information, that person decides whether to make the information public or keep it private. So even though they have 100 million family trees, not all of them are public and not all the members in there are public. So uh, you can't get to all the information even if you have uh, a paid subscription there. But there is stuff that you can search for out there, and some of it is free. I mentioned I like to uh, use the free things, and when I first started this uh, years ago with the Ancestry, I did do the 14-day trial, and I got all the information I could and captured it and stored it down so I wouldn't have to pay the monthly fee or the yearly fee. So that's another thing that you can do is from some of these sources, you can grab a bunch of stuff, save it, and, uh, and build your family trees off of that. So let's go out. Uh, we'll go out to uh, Ancestry.com here. Let me click on here, and we'll open up. 
So this is Ancestry.com. Uh, I don't have a paid subscription, uh, but I do have a free subscription, so anyone can sign up. Uh, you'll see uh, this is my account here. I can go out here and I can search. And let's go out here, let's search for census and uh, voter lists. And I'm going to search for Titus Kreitzer, who is my grandfather or my dad's father there. And he was born in 1902, so the more, more information that you can give it, the, the better the, uh, the results are going to be. But we'll just give it a name and a year here, and let's do a search. And uh, so, and this is just searching census and voter registration there. And here's uh, the 1940 uh, U.S. Census. So Titus is listed on the 1940 U.S. Census. If I click on this, you can see it tells me a whole bunch of information. There's his name, uh, his age, uh, estimated year that he was born, his gender, race, uh, Minnesota, he was married, had a household, uh, Owatonna uh, in Steele County in Minnesota. And at the time, it was 109 East Rice Street is uh, where he was living. And uh, his occupation, he was a medical doctor. He owned the house. Uh, he uh, paid $9,000 for the house. So I'm sure the <laughs> house is worth considerably more today, uh, but at that time, $9,000. Attended school or college. I'm not sure why this says no, because he was a doctor and he did attend school. Oh, attending. I think that's if you're currently in there. So, yeah, he was a uh, college uh, fifth subsequent year. Oh, let's go back here. Uh, class uh, working on account. Uh, he worked 52 weeks out of the year. Back then in the census, they asked people, how many weeks out of the year did you work? Uh, and then also the members of the household at that time, he had his wife, uh, Irene here, and uh, John, uh, who was in back there, he was 13 years old at the time, and uh, his sister, Mary, who was 10 years old. And so that's some, that's information I can use and, and uh, uh, document and that. I can also see the original record, and so this is the original record from the 1940 census. So if I click on that, here it's uh, showing me the, uh, the uh, census record there, and let's blow it up a little bit. And so this is uh, the original census record, and there's Titus and Irene and John and Mary. And that's the way they collected information from the 1940 census there. So it's kind of neat there. Uh, so with, with the free account, I can access a few things there. There's, uh, there's some things, a lot of things that I can't get at unless I have a paid uh, subscription. So this is saying, uh, well, here's some uh, information uh, uh, that goes back quite a ways. Uh, but the only way that I can look at this is to create an account. I have to create an account in Ancestry.com to create an account. Then I can see this information. But if I tried to see it right now, uh, it's going to go here and say, okay, which plan would you like to sign up for? And uh, uh, I'm not willing to pay that. So we won't uh, go down that road right now. So let's go back to our presentation here. So you can search uh, Ancestry.com without paying big money. You can search for free and you can find some really nice information about ancestors and things like that. They also have a number of things out there for tutorials. If you're new to genealogy and trying to figure some things out, they'll, they'll help you. Some of the stuff is free. Some of the stuff uh, you have to pay the subscription or do these things during your 14-day free trial. They have videos, articles, webinars, and blogs out there. They have an active online community with member directory, online forums, message boards, and social media. They also have an app if you have a phone or a tablet uh, for an Android or Apple uh, that you can uh, use with Ancestry. They don't have software for 
like uh, an IBM laptop or a Macintosh, but they do have an app there. They also offer some free templates to help you keep track of the research that you're doing, some of the sources and the charts and things like that. So they do have some of that stuff out there. Also out on the site, you can hire a professional genealogist to do expert research for you. So I think if you've, if you've ever seen, I think on channel two, they do an ancestry uh, show uh, that's using their resources to, for some of the celebrities, they'll trace back and find relatives and things like that. They also have well, what's called My Shoebox Tool. It lets you store records you find but wish to review at a later time. Okay, so in addition to uh, the family trees and stuff like that, uh, you may have seen uh, Ancestry.com also does DNA testing, uh, where you can discover your genetic uh, authenticity and find new family connections with dynamic lists and DNA matches. And uh, about, must have been seven years ago or so, I think we did my, my mom and dad. And this is uh, one of the results from my dad. Uh, at the time, uh, he thought uh, the family mainly came from Germany there uh, because of our name. And uh, that's where uh, our immediate uh, ancestors came from. But uh, our DNA says that uh, we're 56% Norwegian. 41% uh, Sweden and Denmark, and German, we're only 3% German. So uh, it can... Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you never know there. Uh, and so it's kind of interesting to see exactly. Uh, so the family history that was passed down, uh, maybe the last couple of generations, may not have been the most accurate there. But it's kind of interesting to see some of that stuff. Sure. Um, your, your DNA comes from the parents and, and your biology, where you live doesn't shape your biology. Does it? Uh, yes, it does from the standpoint that your DNA is made up of, think of billions of numbers there. Those billions of numbers enable you to trace back your ancestors. So what, what they can do with DNA is they can say that you are the son or daughter of this person. You are the grandchild of this person. You are the great-grandchild of this person. You are the great-great-grandchild of this person. They can trace it back. So how does that say that? Well, because it, they'll trace it back to one person and that, and that way they'll be able to say, at this time, this is where your ancestors were. Not with 100% accuracy, because certainly over time, uh, it, it, it takes two people to have a child, so you're always mixing DNA. So you're never going to have 100% uh, of the same DNA from generation to generation. Or she, yeah, we'll get. I had a question on the same topic, my friend. Um, for instance, I'm from Ireland, so when I do my DNA, I'm 73%, like 99%, I think of that. But so what is Irish? Because you're a bit of a Viking. How far back did they go? Were they from Norway, the Vikings, and all that? How far back does the ancestry history go to say what? Well, and that's, that's, that's a good question. How do they know, you know, what's what? Because what they, what they have to do uh, is it, figure out at some point in time, this is where your ancestors most likely were. Right. Uh, don't know what time that was. Well, they pick a date. And so it, it really is this case of when we did my dad seven years ago, they came up with one set of numbers. And then roughly three years later, they gave us another set of numbers. And so about every three years or so, because they get more of people's DNA, they get more family trees of where people started from and that. Uh, so it, it, it 
gets more accurate and more accurate over time, but it's it's not an exact science right now. It's just interesting. Yes. The bigger group of DNA, the yeah. millions of people that have had DNA tests all, well, billions all over the world, right. but millions in the in the U.S. there. So it's. And this this also leads, if you've seen in the news, where they'll track down some killers uh, because the DNA testing that they could do five years ago or ten years ago isn't in the, as exact as what they can do now. So you you it's all this information uh, can make it easier to kind of trace, but. If you were to say, let's go back to the beginning of time, you know, if we believe that, we'd be back to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> you know, so we'd all be from one spot on the globe, uh, starting in, in that. And uh, so you, this makes no attempt to go all the way back in civilization. This is saying, in general, this is, this is the area that uh, your ancestors came from. And everybody's Irish on St. Patrick's Day, so so you you need the green beer. And <laughs> well, and that's where it it comes back to too. Is you know if if we talk about where did my ancestors come from? Well, my ancestors did come from Germany. It's just that prior to Germany. I had I had some so you know they got around which which is true of most people you know we think of people were born in one area and died in one area and people weren't moving around that much and this is what this DNA is proving is yes we do move around okay uh, the other thing that the DNA testing will do and ancestry will do is it'll suggest matches based on your DNA. So I mentioned the uh, the uh, 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 matching of killers or or stuff like that. Well, this also can match cousins and uh, uh, illegitimate children or things like that. Uh, so you better watch out. You may have some surprises when you do it, but it'll come up with. Uh, cousins, uh, first, second, third, fourth cousins, and it'll tell you who they are. And this is this is 100% accurate. This is uh, so uh, there's no faking that uh, a person is a cousin or not a cousin, that kind of a thing. And uh, so it'll it'll suggest that these are your or it'll say that these are your cousins. And there may be a family tree out on ancestry, and you can go out there and you can look up. Some of the information on the family tree, and this is uh, this is free there if you have the DNA done at Ancestry.com. So there's some things that you can do there, which which is very interesting there. Okay, uh, so that was Ancestry.com, and we'll talk next about uh, the second most popular uh, website or service out there. It's called My Heritage. And my heritage is a little bit cheaper than uh, Ancestry, but still 129 to almost $300 a year. They do have a 14-day free trial. Uh, they also have a free account that you can get. Uh, the free account uh, limits, if you're going to build a family tree, to 250 people. And 250 people sounds like a lot of people until you actually start doing this tree business and it's like the loaves and the fishes. You start out with a couple of, and pretty soon the tree is this big and, uh, and that. So uh, uh, that's what it has there. My Heritage also makes some software, and it's called My Heritage Family Tree Builder, and it's available free of charge for the Windows and the Macintosh. So if you have a Windows or Macintosh, it isn't a 
app for the phone or a tablet. It's for a, a Windows machine or Macintosh. It's the number one choice used by people, uh, used by millions of people worldwide, including myself, to capture their family tree information because it's free. I don't have to pay a monthly fee. I can dump all of this information about ancestors and things like that in there. I use a free account on my PC and I manage over 400 people uh, that so far that I've put in there. Uh, because I uh, don't have a paid account, I can't sync it to their website or share it up on their website with other people. But right now I'm just collecting it and, and filling in some of the gaps and things like that. Uh, uh, so it works great for what I'm doing. And I'll, show, I'll give a demo of it in a little bit. It uses smart matching technology and algorithms to match your family tree to hundreds or millions of profiles in other family trees. It also has spatial recognition, so if you upload a photo, the face recognition tool scans it and finds possible matches already in their database. It also has uh, other photo services out there where you can enhance old photographs, you can colorize them, and you can even animate them. Uh, I've converted over a thousand old photos uh, that my parents had uh, and that over the years and uh, uh, and I've done it for free because occasionally uh, they'll have a period of a week or two weeks where you can use the service for free. They're, uh, they're trying to get you to sign up for uh, their monthly uh, monthly account there. They have a Megadex tool uh, with one click, it'll search the world's top genealogy sources with names and spelling variations. So let's do a little demo here. Uh, let me get here. Uh, so it's software that I've loaded on my laptop, and it's called My Heritage Family Tree. Now let's start it up here. And I don't have to pay anything for this. And I can put in, I could have, I could have a million people in my family tree and it still wouldn't cost me anything. Uh, I have 417 people that I put in here. And uh, I brought up, this is uh, my grandfather, Titus Charles Kreitzer. And uh, what, uh, let's see, I want to stick to my script, otherwise I'll skip some things there. Uh, the free account is limited uh, to sync up at the website and to 250. I don't sync this because I have 417 and I don't want to pay for it. Uh, there's no limit to how many people I can enter on the PC. So uh, I can continue to add in without paying anything. I use it to add details when I have time. So genealogy, you don't just sit down one evening and say, I'm going to do everything tonight or in the next week. You get little bits and pieces here. You talk to people here. You ask a relative. You do this. You do that. And you fill in bits and pieces. Uh, and we'll talk about some of those bits and pieces. Some of them are true and some of them aren't true. So you end up with different dates, different names, uh, uh, different situations there. But uh, you can start with this package and you can put in as little information or as much information as, as you want. Now you can see I put in photographs. So I have some photographs of uh, relatives over the year and that makes it kind of nice. You can, you can see the photographs there of, of some of the people, the ancestors. And there's my dad right there, John. Uh, he's, he's in there. Uh, but yeah, you, you uh, start putting in there. And when you put stuff in, let's go see what kind of information I can put in here. You can see there's a whole bunch of tabs up here. And these tabs have different information. So you have things like the gender, the name, uh, email address if you have it, the date that they were born, where they were born, if they're deceased, dates, places, where they're buried at. If we go to this other info, uh, we, you could store all the different occupations and the different years that they had a different occupation. And you can have any number of occupations. You can have education. You can document all of that, any number of 
primary, secondary, uh, uh, things like that. You can also identify religion, nationality, titles. Let's go here. Contacts, addresses. You can put in any number of addresses. So if you wanted to, uh, that history of where people uh, maybe were born and then they moved to here, and then they moved to here, and then they moved to here. And you can enter this information for every single person in there. So you can uh, really go down to a lot of detail. You can keep track of phone numbers that they've maybe had over the years. Uh, the citations is, as you're collecting this information, it's important to document where you got the information, whether you got it uh, verbally from somebody, you got it off of a gravestone, you got it off of uh, uh, some family history and an old Bible, whether you got, wherever you got it, uh, you uh, want to document where you got it because you will start seeing conflicting information. So you have to start making a decision. Do I believe uh, this uh, uh, old aunt Edna or do I believe... Uh, uh, the U.S. Census, or what do I believe as far as dates and names and things like that. Notes, uh, just like it sounds, you can put in all kinds of notes. So if you find some information, I just put in a few little notes in here. Uh, and you can have any number of notes, and you can uh, also uh, note where you got the notes, uh, where those came from. Then you have a tab called uh, Facts. Uh, facts are... As I mentioned, you're collecting all this information. Over time, you get conflicting information. So once you find out something that you know to be absolutely true and a fact, you can mark that as absolutely true. This is the birth date. This is the death. This is this. So you can mark stuff as absolute fact there. Uh, and more. There's just a few more uh, things that you can collect. And that's for just for a person there. You're also keeping track of for this person. Uh, let's, let's go up to the person here. For the person, a uh, person also has uh, relationships to parents, relationships to siblings, relationships to spouses, uh, relationship to children, photos if you want to attach photos in there. So you can attach all this stuff into uh, information about him. So if uh, uh, he was only married once, but if uh, somebody was married two times and had three kids with one and one with the other, you can keep track of all of that. And that makes it much easier to do than if you were just writing it down in a Word document or uh, trying to scribble and, and draw something. Uh, the information is changing all the time as you do more and more research and find, uh, find different things. So these packages are a must if you're going to try and keep track of this. Okay, let's see. Uh, so the, the tree here, I can, I can go up and down the tree. Uh, currently we're in tree view. And so see, I can see some of the descendants and things like that in here. And if I wanted to work on a different person, uh, I can uh, uh, click on that person, and I can work on them, and I can go up and down the tree as needed there. But let's go back to Titus here. So currently we're in tree uh, mode. The other power of this is as you start collecting your information in here, you can start doing charts. And these charts, let's go to ancestry chart, and let's go to vertical here. And this is creating a chart of the ancestors of Titus. So this is going up the tree. This is uh, where, Aunt, where Titus came from there. Uh, within this report, uh, we have options in here, a ton of different styles that we can use. If we don't want pictures, or let's see, some of these don't have pictures. Uh, what do we have? We have like 30 different styles, and we can choose... Uh, uh, what is shown on there, uh, and uh, all kinds of different information there. So once you start collecting this information in there, it's nice to be able to see this. And you can print it out. Uh, so 
Uh, if you were going to have a family reunion or a birthday or something and you wanted to show it, you can print it out. You can either print it out yourself and print it out on, uh, on uh, eight and a half by 11 and tape them together. Or if you uh, want uh, the My Heritage, you can send it to their printer and at a cost. It'll print it on a big poster board and you'll be able to use that. So uh, they have those services available also. Uh, options uh, here, you have a ton of options for, uh, for uh, uh, titles, uh, design, uh, borders, what's shown, what facts are included if you want to show education, marriage, uh, uh, things like that in there you can show that. So it gives you full control over, uh, over it. The background, lines, fonts. Uh, so you can come up with uh, all kinds of different charts here. So this is the ancestors of Titus. Uh, we also have a bunch of different charts if I wanted to see who the descendants were. So this is going down the tree. So Titus and there's my dad. And, uh, I'm somewhere over here. There I am over here in the family tree. So you can go up and down a family tree and print out uh, what you want. And we can make that bigger or smaller. That would print on multiple sheets there. But it's kind of kind of neat to be able to see that. Again, for a, for a family get-together or things like that, you can keep track of stuff like that. Uh, Another uh, type of chart is what's called a fan chart. And the fan chart, uh, if we go here, let's look at the descendants. So this is a different way to show it. Uh, uh, showing the, uh, the way that uh, you start out with Titus and it, and it uh, expands out in a fan. We can do an hourglass. So an hourglass is, uh, uh, for ancestors, it's going to show both directions both up and down uh, for the person that I selected there. It's showing, uh, showing all the different people there. So it's kind of nice there. So those are different reports that, I mean, different charts that you can do. And that's the family tree type charts, but you can see it's more elaborate than just one family tree. You have all these different options of what to show and how to show it and, uh, that makes it really, really uh, powerful. Another thing you can do is uh, produce reports. And let's do a book report. A book report uh, basically says, take kind of all the information that I've got, uh, that I've entered so far, and uh, give, me, uh, give me a book there. And so if I do this, uh, this will take a little bit of time here. It's going through and it's generating it. It's looking at both the ancestors and the descendants and Give it a few seconds here. And it's finished. But finished. And this is a PDF file that it created. Here's a genealogy report for Titus Charles Kreitzer. And you can see it has all, it's 106 pages long. So it took all the information I had out here. It has uh, paternal ancestry, maternal ancestry, descendants, direct relationships, indirect relationships. And so if we look in here, it has uh, some charts that it created, some simple charts. Then it starts uh, listing direct relationships. These are the great-great-grandchildren. Uh, and so it shows all of them. And we have 106 pages of this detail. So uh, all that information that you entered in is kept in there and made available so that you can share it with somebody else there. So let's go back here. Uh, the reports also, I could just pick like the descendants. If I, wanted, if I didn't like the 106 pages, I just wanted to do the descendants of uh, Titus. Here's a... Uh, Here's a five-page report uh, for the descendants of uh, Titus. So he's the first generation. There's the second generation. 
third generation, fourth generation, and fifth generation. So it's kind of kind of neat there. So lots of information uh, once you start entering it in that you can get out in these various charts or, or reports there. Okay, let's go back to the presentation here. Okay, so we talked about Ancestry.com and the MyHeritage. Uh, like I said, I use MyHeritage. I put all my stuff in there. I don't have to pay a fee, but I can get at and I can print and I can create all these charts there. There's a ton of other free resources out there. Uh, one of them, uh, the most popular one, is uh, Family Search. And the Family Search uh, is the Church of Latter day Saints genealogy. They have over a billion records in their database, and it's free to search, and it'll show trees and stuff like that. And it has a ton of learning resources. Another one is the National Archives. So, our federal government uh, has out there the National Archives. Uh, you can go after census records, and the census records are out there from 1790 up till 1940 uh, because uh, what they do is they do not publish the most current census records. They wait 72 years because otherwise the information could be used by somebody trying to steal your identity or uh, things like that. So uh, actually this year in April, the 1950 census will be released because it's it'll be 72 years since uh, uh, the 1950 census there. And uh, as we saw when we looked at that other census record, you have things like name, age, address, parents' birthplace, year of immigration, if relevant, occupation, value of home, lots of different uh, information. So it is interesting to see. You have military service records. You have immigration and naturalization records. So let's go out. Let's, let's go out to the archives. We'll just take a quick peek. I won't go in and uh, and do much there, but uh, you can see uh, the National Archives. Ton of information out here. It's all free. All free for you to use. There's the census records, military records. Uh, uh, they have tools if you're new to genealogy to help you get started and things like that. Here they're mentioning that the 1950 census will be released later this year. So a ton of information there. Uh, veteran service records will be, uh, uh, so uh, draft records, uh, uh, and, uh, like I got my dad's enlistment uh, document that he signed uh, to enlist in the Army, uh, discharge information. Uh, things like that. So it's it's uh, records that uh, the federal government has for that individual. Uh, I'm not sure. I I guess. Well, I I believe on, like on my dad. I'm not sure if it showed it on there. You'd have to check out there. I'm not I'm not positive there. Yeah, which branch and, and things like that. Yeah, I don't I don't recall seeing uh, you know the exact, but it, it's it's information that you you know if you asked your parents, they might have forgotten or things like that. This is uh, you know going back to let's say the Civil War or that you may have records uh, from your family from the Civil War. Yes. So the federal, the, and that's very good, the, the federal government will make available their information that they have. You will not get current information. So if you're looking for somebody, let's say, that served in Vietnam, they will not give out information unless it's 72 years or older. So it's only up to that point 
that uh, they'll give out information, names and dates and things like that, because they don't want to give a hacker or somebody trying to steal identity uh, access to current information for people out there. Okay. Uh, this I found is a very powerful tool too. It's called Find a Grave. Now this isn't for if you're looking to see where you want to get buried. This is searching uh, 210 million memorials out there uh, of graves. Uh, and so let's just take a quick look out here. So Find a Grave, you can go in and search. Uh, so let's search for Titus here. Uh, and let's see, he was born in 1902. And so this found an entry out here. And somebody had put a picture out here. Now, I had never seen this picture before. My dad had never seen this picture before. So again, it's kind of interesting what you run into when you search for some of these things. Uh, but uh, gives his birth, death, burial, uh, information there. But also what's happened is people have added additional things. So this is a, a entry for, I mean, not an entry. This is the, the gravestone uh, for, for his burial there. It also lists other family members that are out here. Uh, his parents, John Kreitzer and Mary, his spouse, uh, siblings uh, that are also buried there. And you can click around here. And that's why I mentioned that you can get off track and going in all different directions. Because the minute you start doing some of this stuff, all of a sudden you're clicking on this and Oh, let's go to John here. Oh, let's see, John. Oh, there's there's a nice, uh, it's showing the memorial there. Oh, oh here's uh, somebody that I hadn't heard of. And you start clicking down and getting information on them. So you start gathering all this information. So here's uh, John Kreitzer. Somebody put in, uh, uh, dies from injuries. Death uh, relieved the suffering of John Kreitzer, 71, prominent businessman in New Richland. And it's got some, some information there. I didn't put any of this information out there. Somebody else, uh, you know, on who, uh, you can add stuff if you want, but uh, because you have literally millions of people using this data, they're all adding stuff and sharing it with each other, which makes it really nice. So let's uh, go back here. Uh, another one is the Library of Congress. Uh, there they have images, city directories, county histories, newspapers, and other uh, historical information that you have available. So each year, more and more of this stuff is getting uh, digitized and available out on the web. So even if you search today, a year from now, there'll be even more things available out there. Another uh, good resource is the U.S. Gen Web Project. Uh, it has free county and state historical and genealogy resources. Uh, there's volunteers and local and state genealogy societies throughout the United States that add to this. Cindy's List, it's a free cross-reference index. It uh, contains extensive lists of genealogy services. Also, if you're not familiar, uh, most of the high school yearbooks and college yearbooks are available out there to, to search for free. So if you don't have your old yearbook or just want to look somebody up or things like that, you can usually find uh, your yearbook out there and, and go through it. And then I mentioned here, uh, I find different photos and I end up sharing them uh, on a package of uh, Google Photos. And uh, I think right now, this is both with current photos and old photos, we have probably 40,000 photos out there. Okay, what are some tips and tricks? Uh, check with your relatives if, uh, if they already have started doing family tree or collecting some of this information. So you can uh, get a leg up and, uh, and save yourself uh, a lot of work if you can uh, collect this information that they already have. And 
no matter what tool they're using, if they're using Ancestry or they're using any of these other sites for doing it, all these sites have the ability to do what's called exporting the data, and then you can import it into the service that you use or into the software. So uh, that software that I showed earlier, I had taken uh, stuff out of another package and put it into that software. I didn't have to re-enter it all. So it can save you a ton of time. Uh, uh, just be aware, though, if you're copying from somebody, their information, uh, some of it may be valid and some of it may not be valid. So uh, you do have to verify things. Set a goal for what you want to collect. So don't, don't just say, I'm going to get all ancestors and I'm going to trace myself back to Adam and Eve. You'll never, you'll never get there. <laughs> we, none of us are going to live that long. Select a family line, for example. Work on that family line. Don't boil the ocean, so don't get sidetracked on some of these things and keep your focus there. You'll get pulled in many different directions uh, as you start collecting information. Stay on track. Talk to older relatives now before it's too late. We are the older relatives. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're, you're the older, but maybe you've got uh, uh, somebody else in the family that's starting to do that. You can help them and, uh, and stuff like that. So... Uh, it's a case, uh, do it now before, before you lose it. And before you talk to people, prepare questions uh, that you're going to ask them. Uh, record the interview. Now with smartphones and things like that, it makes it easy to record. Uh, ask if they have any old photos or videos to share, and then digitize them. And that way, uh, get everything that you can get your hands on right now and, uh, and get it there. Uh, if you're talking to people, it uh, usually helps if you get several people together. They'll feed off of each other, uh, there's old stories, memories, and you'll get better information there. And plus, they'll forget that they're being recorded. If it's one person, it can be a little intimidating there. Uh, this is, uh, I've, I've mentioned this before, caution. Assume all information that you get is not accurate until you verify it from multiple sources. Even then, document the differences in the sources. Uh, and that can include names, family trees, census records, dates, ages, and other info that are not perfect, which is very confusing about what is right and what is uh, wrong information there. Some information can change over time. As an example, my grandmother was born with the last name of Mueller. So on certain census records, it's Mueller. And then during World War I, they changed their name from Mueller to Miller. Uh, so all of a sudden, if you're trying to trace things and, oh, where, where'd this name come from? Or why isn't, I thought it was this. Well, things happen. <laughs> things happen and, and uh, uh, just be prepared for changes there. Document your information and sources. Uh, and the values. It's the number one sin of the beginning uh, genealogist of not knowing where they got this information. So if somebody tells you this is a relative and you're not really sure, make sure you keep track of it because another relative may have the accurate information. Not all research can be done online. So I mentioned there's a lot of stuff out on the internet. There's still a lot of stuff that is still buried in old newspapers, in county records. Not all county records have been digitized and put out there. And all of these services and stuff like that are adding more and more uh, each year. So uh, uh, some of it uh, still has to be done with the others. A DNA test can help fill in a distant or a lost relative. I mentioned that a little earlier. Every genealogist does genealogy differently for different reasons. Yours is as right as anyone else's. And the level of detail that you choose to go down to, you don't have to go down to a lot of detail. If you just want to know three generations back or two generations back, that's fine. You know, how much time you spend on it, all up to you. There's no right or wrong there. This is an important one. Share your information with others. 
Make sure to limit who can see information from living people. So you do want to share it with friends and family and relatives, but you don't want to necessarily make everything public because again, that identity theft and, and things like that. So for the people that are still living, you don't want to give out all kinds of information on where they live and when they were born, things like that. Uh, 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 so when you use these services, you can decide what to make private. You can uh, make whole family trees private. You can uh, make just current records uh, uh, private and the ones of descendants, uh, you can make those public if you want. Publish your information, share it with other people because then you'll start getting feedback of what's right, what's wrong, where something can be filled in. Everything from a book, so when you publish, you can publish it in a book, a Word document, put it in a binder or a PDF or a poster. Others are interested in your family history as well, so the minute you start collecting things, People are always interested to look at it and maybe fill in some of the gaps and some of the things that they know. It makes great Christmas gifts for your kids, a parent, a grandparent, aunts, uncles, cousins. Uh, so once you start collecting this and that and, and get family stories in that, uh, chances are they haven't heard a lot of these family stories in history. Okay, that's our presentation. One thing before I open it up, let me do this. I mentioned photographs, and this is an example of uh, some of the photographs. So like the, uh, uh, let's pull up this, let me pull up this. This is uh, Titus Kreitzer, my grandfather, and this is a picture that he had. Uh, I mentioned uh, my heritage has the service that'll colorize. So I prefer the colorized version to the old black and white version. So that's what the original photograph looked like. This is what it looks like colorized. And uh, I think they really do a good job uh, of colorizing it and making it realistic there. Uh, and as you collect these different things, and so this is an example, there's a baptismal certificate. Uh, so as you start collecting different things, uh, here's a baptismal certificate too. Uh, census records. Uh, I've, I've kept, as, as I come across them, I keep the things there. So here's Kreitzer, John, Mary, Joseph, Raymond, and Titus. So this is uh, my dad's. This is from the census in 1905. This is the 1905 census. And let's do another colorization. We'll show one of my mom and dad. They were married in 1952. And uh, so this is their, uh, their wedding photo in 1952, black and white photo there. And let's, uh, that's what it looks like in black and white. And it looks very good there in color. So, no, you can see I've got, it's a brand new photo. Uh, so you have the option of what to show and what not to show. Now, it colorized this, and, and as an example, nothing's perfect. It shows his tie as red. Well, I think your tie must have been black there, wasn't it, Dad? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but... You know, otherwise it, it gets most things correct. It knows that bricks tend to be brown, sky tends to be blue, grass tends to be green, uh, and that. But when it comes to some things that it colorizes, it, it only has a shade of gray. It doesn't know what the original color was. What does it do with using the different colors? It's using the, uh, the gray and converting it there. So, I mean, it'll, you, you can try it and see there, and, and obviously some, most of the photos it does a good job. Uh, there are some photos where it doesn't, uh, doesn't do uh, as good a job, but in general, uh, this is a free service, and uh, you can choose, do I like this or not like this, and what do I want to... Is it in the software? Is it in the software that you have to go online? 
you the, what you do on the site is you upload the photo to their website it takes uh, roughly 10 seconds 15 seconds and then I download the photo to my PC uh, so I, I like I said I've done thousands of them and I can do probably uh, I don't know what it is five and five a minute uh, mm -hmm. I have a faster internet connection and you can drag and drop and bang 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 and and uh, go through and and colorize and and most of the most of the old photos I have I have gone through and colorized so we've got photos uh, like I say from let's let's find so this is this is uh, a great 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 uh, grandma there and there's the colorized there and it sharpens it did it's actually doing two functions both sharpening the photo and colorizing it there so kind of a nice nice little thing there and as you start accumulating more photos and documents and things like that you want to uh, preserve them and, and uh, uh, make them available there and share them with friends and family. Okay. Okay. Uh, question. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the photos, the photos. Uh, so here I was looking at them. I organize them on my computer, on my laptop here. But then when I share them, I share them with friends and family. Uh, the way that I share them with friends and family is I use uh, Google Photos. And Google Photos, uh, I have out here uh, all my albums. I have like 40,000 pictures out here. So if we go out here to the 1800 to 1929, these are the same photos that we were looking at before. There's my relatives let's find uh, this is this is uh, Titus there let's find here's Titus too he's a, a little Lord Montleroy with the flowers and a uh, little this is my uh, grandmother there uh, so it's kind of nice to have the photos and and I'll probably talk about the photos and how to digitize maybe at another session there. Uh, but as you're starting to collect the family trees and sharing photos with friends and family, uh, the days when one person had a photo or something up on the wall, nowadays you can take a picture of it and you can share it and everybody can have access to it. So it's very powerful. If you buy a subscription to my heritage, you won't see it. Okay. I'm the free guy. I see it. Now, I keep the original, so I have the original black and white uh, that without the watermark. Uh, so if I ever did uh, uh, get a subscription, then I could uh, colorize it or that and not have it. But there is, you're right, down down here at the bottom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The people in the picture aren't named my heritage. No, it's no. It's not a piece of useful Yeah, the, the, the sites uh, where you uh, are maintaining, you can allow other people to go into your tree and make changes, which, like you say, can be dangerous because they might be putting in inaccurate information. Usually you're only going to trust somebody who you're actually talking with or... Yeah, having multiple people work on it and collect information. And what will happen on these sites and that, so uh, if you're just starting out, 
You could sign up for the 14-day trial of Ancestry, go out there, and chances are you're going to find a bunch of public information that other people have put in. You could download all that and then quit your subscription after your 14-day free trial and continue to add stuff on offline, not having to pay. That's, that's what I do in that. So, yeah, so what you have, whether you're on Ancestry or MyHeritage or any of the sites, when you go out to your family tree, so if I, I'm using the software here, but it, it works the same way out on any of the sites there. Uh, well, let me go here. Let me close this. I've got multiple copies open here. So when I'm out here, if I go up to File here, you'll see here's options to import or export. So all that information uh, that I put in here about uh, an individual or a family tree, I can export it and save it on a file. I can go to one of these other services. I could import it. So the Ancestry, if I went out to Ancestry in the 14 days, uh, copied a bunch of stuff and started creating a tree, before the 14 days is up, I'd export that data down to my PC. Now I can bring it into this free package and I can do stuff. And then this is also true of, uh, uh, let's say I wanted to uh, use Ancestry for a year. I sign up for a year and I build out all kinds of stuff. At the end of the year, I don't want to continue to pay, so I'll export everything and save it. Otherwise, it's going to be lost, yes. Yeah, so that's, that's their kind of threat there, is if you're not uh, keeping your membership up, you won't have access to it. But if you export what you have and bring it into one of these packages, you, you still have all that valuable information you've collected, all the links to parents and children and uh, dates and everything is all, is all brought over. Some of the stuff that may not be brought over is things like photographs, because there isn't really an industry standard to, to link photographs in, uh, but all the other information, the trees and uh, how many siblings and dates and things like that, that's all standard information that you can export and import in from one package to another. Sure. That's okay. I, he, he, yeah, my dad can hear me when I talk, but he's not hearing the question. But yeah, that's a good point that information and genealogy is changing all the time because these services like Ancestry and that are adding more information. But also, if I went out there today and I started collecting information for my grandfather there, from somebody else's tree, chances are that person is also working on the tree. And as they come up with more information and more dates, or they change a date, oh, he, he uh, said 1902, it was 1903, and uh, you know, it, they're changing information just like if you're doing genealogy, you're changing that information that you have in here as you get more information. Talk to another relative, and you may know the dates of your parents and maybe the grandparents. You start going beyond that, and then it's, okay, where did you get that information? Is it from an old Bible? Was it from a gravestone? People will go, well, gravestones are accurate. 
Well, I'm here to tell you that gravestones aren't 100% accurate because they don't necessarily have the correct dates on there. You will see different dates there as opposed to an obituary that may have been in a paper 100 years ago. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, date, uh, the dates on some of the stuff uh, will change depending on who put in the data and where they got the data from. Sure. So this is, this is an example of public information uh, from when my dad enlisted in the Army, where he went and uh, dates and stuff like that. So uh, you're right. You, that's the beauty of doing this research. It, you, you start trying to find information for A, and you move over here, and you find this, and then you find that, and then this links to this. and, and uh, before you know it, if you're doing this, let's say you started at 7 o'clock at night, before you know it, it's midnight, and you originally were going to spend 15 minutes on it, and it's five hours later, and, and you're, you're just engrossed in it. So you forgot what you were asking. Right. So it can be kind of fun. It's a hobby, uh, but you can don't be intimidated that you have to spend a lot of time because you add this information when you want, add as much information as you want. So there's no right or wrong of how much to keep or or uh, what uh, what people to look up or anything like that. Uh, you know, because some of these some of these other I have more information up my grandfather's side than I have up uh, my grandmother's side. So you'll find that, you know, if you end up with uh, her family as Johnson, well, Johnson is a harder name to trace because there's more people named Johnson than there is Kreitzer. Kreitzer is pretty unique in the United States, so it's easier to find records uh, and things like that than for a Johnson or a Smith or a Hanson or a thing, things like that. So. But that's part of the investigation work is to see if you can match up some of this stuff and fill in some of the gaps. Other questions or comments there? Okay, well, thanks. Thanks for coming. And if you do run into any questions, uh, you can send them to me through the website or... or uh, uh, Get a hold of me there, and our next topic uh, in March will be on the uh, uh, the wills and uh, legal legal sites and information there. Thank you.